So what I'm going to do, guys, I want to talk about, I want to talk about some things, uh, some topics, and I'd like to be able to do it without having to shout. So, as you know, guys, today is uh, Palm Sunday, right? It is the triumphal entry of our Lord Jesus Christ that we commemorate and that we honor today, that Jesus entered into Jerusalem and was hailed as King and Messiah of the Jews. We read in Matthew 21, 1 to 5, this. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples saying, go into the village in front of you and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her, untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, the Lord has need of them, and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken of by the prophet saying, and this is a quotation from Zechariah, I think it's Zechariah 9.9, 9, say to the daughter of Zion, oh, Zechariah, sorry, this is from the prophet saying, say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you humble. Sorry, it is Zachariah. Let me get that straight. Behold, your king is coming to you humble and mounted on a donkey and a colt of, uh, and a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. So when Christ enters into Jerusalem, he comes riding on a donkey. Now, that's not very king-like. That's not very triumphant. So why does the church honor it and celebrate it as a triumphant entry of Jesus? Incidentally, notice what doesn't appear in that story. Bearing in mind that Roman garrisons guarded Jerusalem against insurrection and were always conscious of the possibility of trouble based on the Jewish feasts and festivals, the Romans would have been on their guard in Jerusalem about any possibility of trouble. So why when they see Jesus coming on a donkey, don't they interfere? Why don't they feel threatened or challenged by that? And the reason for that is precisely because to the Roman minds, a man riding in on the foal of a donkey, the colt of a donkey, isn't a threat. That's something to be ridiculed. It's something to be laughed at. Because when you think about the Roman triumphal marches into Rome after they'd just conquered a kingdom, they had their leaders being drawn on chariots, being led on horses. They had their enemies being dragged along as slaves. And yet here is Jesus riding in on a donkey, the very image would have looked comical to Roman eyes, which is why they didn't interfere. But Jesus' riding in on a donkey, as we see, is a fulfillment of prophecy. The prophecy of Zechariah, that mentions about this coming king riding in on a donkey. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when we, I, I want to read from Doug Bookman who is a biblical scholar, and he says this about Zechariah 9.9. He says, Behold, O Jerusalem of Zion, the king comes to you meek and lowly, riding upon a donkey. Now, by the way, most people have it in their mind that the meekness and lowliness was the donkey. That is not so. The donkey was a royal steed in the Old Testament. The king rode on a donkey. That's very, very important, not a horse. Because then he'd have to be a conqueror. But because he was in, in charge here, he rode on a donkey. And remember when Absalom usurped the kingdom from his father, David, the first thing he did was to get on his royal donkey and ride through the streets of the city. 
When it says he comes meek and lowly, the idea is he comes with no military apparatus. He doesn't bring an army. He comes meek and lowly, riding upon a donkey. So the donkey, I think, is the sign of his kingliness. So the donkey is not a sign of Christ uh, coming in, as it were, uh, of his humbleness. That, that, that's what he's, he's got naturally. The don riding the donkey is a sign of his kingship, but it's also a statement about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God that we as Christians believe in. The kingdom of God that we as Christians belong to. The kingdom of God that we as Christians serve which is this, that the way of the kingdom of God is the way of peace. It is the way of humility. It is not the way of violence and it is not the way of power. The kings of the world advance their empires through violence. The kings of the world advance their empires through military force. That cannot be so with us as Christians. We must advance the kingdom of God through charity, through kindness, through humility, through acts of service, and through principally the love that we show to one another. That is the principal means by which we as the militants of the church advance the kingdom of God and establish the kingdom of God here on earth as is not the way of triumphal dominance. Ours is not the way of military conquest. Ours is the way of humility, service and peace. Now, let's be clear. The cause of peace does not rule out violence. Police officers are meant to be keepers of the peace and if we had some decent police, they would be dealing out some violence to a lot more Islamists on our streets, but they don't to keep the peace. So keeping the peace is not about being non-violent. But what it does mean is that when Christians use violence, we are not using violence to force people to become Christian. There can be none of that amongst the church. We as Christians can only use violence to advance peace. And we do this because of the example of Christ that we honor today, that Christ came riding on a donkey. He came as someone who rode on a donkey in the way of peace. Now, I just want to show you, ladies and gentlemen, about how we as Christians, how the Bible talks about the use of donkeys. Okay, so it says, for, a, so for instance, right, um, long before Christ came, rich men and the judges of Israel would ride upon donkeys. In the 10th verse of the 5th chapter of Judges, it says, Speak ye that ride upon white donkeys, ye that sit in judgment. So when we see Christ riding on a donkey, it's not just a declaration that he is a king. It's also a declaration that he is a judge of Israel because he is embodying all of the images that are embodied in the riding of donkeys. So, for instance, in the Bible it says, the ox knoweth his owner, and the donkey his master's crib. But Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. It is not a sad thing that dull donkeys should be there to greet Christ at his birth. The reality is, ladies and gentlemen, that Christ is one who is both judge and king of Israel, he demonstrates to, his, to us that his kingdom comes in peace and humility, 
and that therefore as Christians we should seek to advance the kingdom of God with peace and humility but not weakness. Weakness ladies and gentlemen is what you've just seen from the cretin over there. The one who seeks to abuse and cajole but when I come to debate him about Islam you will see that all of his confidence evaporates. All of his strength evaporates because he won't be able to answer any of the questions that I give him about Islam. Because the Muslims think that they can advance Islam through bullying and intimidation, even of women as you're demonstrating right now, as the man tries to mock the woman in front of him, to his friend, as you can see right now. That's the fruits of Islam that they're demonstrating to us right now. Our response, brothers and sisters, should not to be act like the vermin that they are acting like, but to elevate ourselves above them and to act with humility and grace. But humility and grace does not mean weakness. We can and we should stand up to them. Because to keep the peace, sometimes you must use force. And thus intrinsic to the doctrine of just war is that ultimately our use of force should be to establish a lasting peace. Not to force people into Christianity.